Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at the 10 worst PlayStation exclusives. Leia has leveled up. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at the worst games to have been published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Did you play any of these terrible titles? What's a first party PlayStation game that you regret buying? Share us your remorse down in the comments, and I will see you there because I actually bought some of these. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Ridge Racer. Can't even work up the energy to make the iconic shout because this game was so awful. Ridge Racer was supposed to be a game that showed off the capabilities of the ill-fated PlayStation Vita. While it achieved that in a visual sense, that's all it really did. Ridge Racer needed to be a video game with some actual content and not just some tech demo. Someone's trying to pass you! Ready for nitrous! Where are all the tracks? Why are there so few cars? Shouldn't this have been a premiere debut for Ridge Racer on Vita? All of these questions and more would kill off a legendary Namco IP, and it's why we haven't seen the series since. Well, aside from a couple of mobile games and then that one time where they tried to copy Burnout and... Yeah, I don't know if we're ever getting Ridge Racer, guys. Ridge Racer! Finish! Third place! Not bad! Lair. The other Guardian is still in danger. In all honesty, Lair was such a cool idea for a game. If you loved Star Fox 64, like I did, or Panzer Dragoon, this would have been the perfect game for you. And yet, it fumbled in such a horrible way that we're almost embarrassed to have any kind of appreciation for it. The controls were so abhorrent that it feels like most of your time is spent fighting the controller itself and struggling to get a grasp on how the game needs to be played. The story, graphics, and sound are fine, but dang man, if your game doesn't have a solid control scheme, no one is going to want to play it. Lair should have been way better, and if only they had just picked up some cues from Nintendo or Sega. Fat Princess Adventures. Check your map by holding down L1. <laughs> in case you weren't familiar with it in its early days, Fat Princess was an online game for the PS3 that tasked two teams with rescuing their princesses from the opposing side. Cute but violent, it quickly established itself a modest fan base with PlayStation owners thanks to its unique concept and for it not being another flip and shooter in a saturated market. Unfortunately, Fat Princess went a completely different direction on PS4, going from team-based capture the flag to generic top-down gauntlet clone. Leia has leveled up. <laughs> but it wasn't just the visuals that were a problem here. None of Fat Princess Adventures gameplay understood the identity of the IP, outside of throwing cake everywhere. Half of the original's classics are just gone, and her royal chubbiness herself has barely any real presence in the game. Like, what's the point of all this? I spent five bucks on this game and I still want a refund. You have saved the day! Kung Fu Rider. Remember that time when Sony tried to copy the Wii? Yeah, the Move controllers have improved in quality thanks to the PSVR, but back in the early years, PlayStation Move was very rough. Kung Fu Rider was the prime example of just how bad things were, too. The silly concept wasn't enough to hide the abysmal and unresponsive controllers, nor the monotonous level design. It's just a miserable experience all around, and it felt like it was just setting us up to break our TVs, just as many irresponsible folks did with Wii Sports. Knack. <laughs> 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 
PlayStation Move had a much higher chance of becoming a thing than Knack ever did. Seriously, what the hell is this game? You play as a collection of blocks and change sizes just to go beat the crap out of some bad guys? We could forgive the obnoxious contrast and visuals if the dialogue wasn't so painfully mediocre, so cookie-cutter DreamWorks movie. No. We weren't expecting some high-class story about existentialism or identity or whatever, but we also weren't expecting writing that felt like DreamWorks was having such a really bad off year, man. We've got company. Stop him. As for the gameplay, there's simply nothing fun about it. Most of the time, you're sizing up or down just for puzzles. In combat, you're only doing simple punches and kicks while enemies get to do all this cool stuff. How did this game even get a sequel? Knack! Kill Strain. Funny story about this, we were originally going to put Haze on here, but it didn't match our criteria. Then, I remembered this mess of a multiplayer game. The fact I almost completely forgot about playing this should tell you just how awful Kill Strain really was. This was an online twin stick shooter with a quote, monumental twist, as they say, where both teams of players fight for control over a third faction, infected zombies known as the Strain. Yes. It was chaotic, but only in the last minute or so of the match. The larger portion of the game is spent wondering what the hell you should be doing besides eliminating the other team and the occasional zombie. Warning! Severe strain activity detected! Turret under attack! You're basically not going to have any idea of what's going on until things ramp up at the end. To no one's surprise, Kill Strain had such a minuscule player base, if it even had one, that the servers were shut down less than a year after launch. Destruction All Stars. Woo, Shredder's ready to make an entrance. The hero vehicle is ready to ride. Let's see some action. Yet another online-driven experience that has been soiled by a lack of focus, Destruction All-Stars was not a strong start in the PlayStation 5's first year. Having gone from demanding 70 bucks to 20, which, really? Destruction All-Stars wants all of your time and money for as little effort as possible. Whoa, Ultimo, there's no getting through that. For most of its life, the game was borderline unplayable online with its awful lag, ghost hits, and disconnects. As for single player content, you'll have to pony up even more money to unlock the other characters' campaigns, none of which are remotely entertaining with their story, characters, nor gameplay. And to this day, the trophies are still bugged. I have gone back to this game several times in the last year and a half, and they're still bugged. They wanted $70 for this game. $70! Four, three, two, one, the Order 1886. While we're on the subject of overpriced games, The Order 1886 would have been a solid movie if it was made as a movie. But this is a video game. A video game that wanted $60 from us for a middle of the lane six or five hour series of quick time events and shooting galleries. In other words, it was a carnival ride. Sir Luca, this is Sentinel 3. We are one league north of Westminster Bridge. Sentinel 3! And then it had the audacity to end with a cliffhanger and left things untied? For a PS4 tech demo, it's okay at best. But for a, I repeat, a video game that cost $60 and had such little meat on its bones, there was barely any value here, let alone a deserved get ready for the sequel in cinematic universe moment. It was overpriced, overhyped, and overly simplistic. <laughs> Oh, 
Twisted Metal 3. Some might say this was the first PlayStation exclusive that was truly awful. To be fair, Twisted Metal 3 was a decent game in terms of standard vehicular combat, but for a Twisted Metal game, it misses all the marks. The level design felt like it was cobbled together with no rhyme or reason. The physics make driving and turning a real pain as you'll often overcorrect yourself, but the most glaring mistake here is the drastic change in tone. How did we get goofy and cartoony out of a game that was maniacal and had some attitude? Perhaps Sony should have given 989 Studios more than 8 months to deliver a proper game. At least the inclusion of Rob Zombie music fit in with it. Ape Escape on the Loose So, Spike, has the professor finished creating his time machine yet? He said it's just about done! How embarrassing must it be to develop a remake of one of your very own games and completely forget about an incredibly important facet of the original? Ape Escape on the Loose is the worst PlayStation exclusive ever because of how it neglects a significant part of how a game like Ape Escape should function properly. The way Ape Escape is played is that you have two analog sticks, one to control Spike and the other to use your tools in different directions. It's part of why Sony developed the DualShock controller in the first place. They needed more options for players so that they can properly equip their tools and then have a good sense of aiming. On the loose, a remake of the original Ape Escape was developed for the PlayStation Portable, which was a handheld that only had one analog stick. You are missing half of your control scheme, my guy. This resulted in making the game way more infuriating to play, as players were now completely restricted to using tools in only the direction Spike was facing. It completely destroyed the fun in chasing monkeys, platforming, and general movement. To call this game humiliating is an understatement. Again, how do you completely forget an important part in your game's success? How? Transporting. Gotcha. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.